what are the types of farming activities that we have? When we talk about farming, we talk about fish farming, we talk about livestock, we talk about crops, you know, we talk about processing, logistics, and all of that. But this morning, let's start with crop farming. So when we talk about micro crop farming, we're talking about small scale. In everybody's house, you can go and practice one form of small scale farming. And you can see today we have plants in um, buckets, in sacks. This is pepper in a bucket. This is oregano. I'm sure that when she's going to speak, she will talk about oregano. This is something that is planted in the pot. This is pineapple in a pot. This is yam in a pot. You can grow tomatoes, you can grow carrots, you can do anything and everything in a pot for the yam. You know the tuba goes into the earth. And so you are mimicking the soil. You are mimicking the soil. You are packing soil inside the sack. And your tuba goes inside. And that way you don't have to destroy your tiles or anything. You have what you need inside this sandbag. So what are the things that you look out for? When you are growing anything in a sandbag, you must make sure that water can drain. Because if you have too much water, it kills whatever plant that you have. So anytime you are using a sandbag, you perforate so that water can drain. And then what is the type of soil that you are using? The type of the soil is also very key. For instance, yam thrives in loamy soil. You can't use clay soil because if it's clay, it cakes together. And then it does not allow the yam to manifest itself and express itself in the, in the bag. So whatever soil that you are going to use is a loamy soil. And you put your yam tubers in cuttings. We call them yam seeds. What type of yam do you want to grow? Is it the water yam? Is it the white yam? Is it the yellow yam? You need to know the type of the yam that you want to grow. So the type of the yam is what will determine what you should do. But I always tell people that anything you want to do now, for instance, some of us, when we eat in the house, the tomatoes or the pepper, we just come home and we pour it in our garden. It's wrong. Because you don't even know the variety of the pepper. We shouldn't be doing things for the fun of doing things. Anytime you want to go into agriculture, you should be intentional. You should be intentional. There are peppers that will fetch you a lot of money. For instance, we have the habanero pepper. The habanero, pe habanero pepper, if they are selling one kilogram of ordinary pepper for three, five, habanero may go for 5,000, 7,000, almost twice the amount. So let's not do things in agriculture as a pastime. Let's be intentional. The yam seed that you want to grow, what variety are you looking at? You should always target a high yielding variety. A variety that you know will give you a big tuber. And so when you get your yam seed, your yam, you will cut it and then you will treat it. When the eye comes out, that's when you plant in your yam bag. And it starts to come out. And you must take it. Because these vines must find somewhere to climb on. Next slide, please. I think I have, you can see that. You can see the yam, the bags. That's somebody's farm that has a lot of yam bags. And you can imagine the number of tubers that they can get. When the vine starts coming out, they stick with bamboos or sticks. And you create a, you know, you allow the vines to creep on it. And you can imagine it's a sight to behold. It's a sight to behold. It's a beauty to behold. Several times, agriculture, you can actually go into tourism with agriculture. You know, where people will come and look at how beautiful this is. 
And this is a beauty to behold. The same way you are doing this, you can also do plantain like that. Plantain. You can plant plantain inside sack. You can plant carrots inside sack. You can plant anything and everything inside sack. The same thing with this. Your flower pots. Always make sure that they have holes underneath. Because if they don't have holes, it will be waterlogged. For instance, I planted celery in the house. And my house helps kept pouring so much water. And I think we didn't have enough holes. So the soil became waterlogged. And naturally, the plants died. So always ensure that your pots have holes. Your wooden vats. Some of us, we don't want to have pots. So you can do wooden vats. What are wooden vats? You just make a box, pour sand inside, and make holes. You know, the wooden vat is bigger. So the plants can express themselves better. You can imagine, if I put this, in fact, it was my house help in the house. He saw an empty flower pot, and we ate plant, um, pineapple, so he just planted it inside the thing. But if I would do this, I would use a bigger flower pot so that the, plant, uh, the pineapple vines can express themselves. And the beauty of it is that, you know, pineapple gives birth to another one. So in no time, another sucker will be coming out from the side. And you can imagine in the next eight months, you're already having a plantation of pineapples. So that's part of it. Next slide, please. Ugu, I know that a lot of us here, we love Ugu. You can plant your Ugu inside pots. You don't have to plant your Ugu on the soil. And you can see that slide. This particular, the second one. The first one is where the, the, the leaves are just sprouting. The seed is just sprouting. See, is this not a beautiful garden? Look at that second one. Is a beautiful garden. Even when you are not feeling too happy. You know, nature has a way of healing you. Nature has a way of healing. Just sit down around this area and you will begin to see that you can meditate better. You can meditate better. So these are ugus planted inside pots and then they are coming out. And you can see how they sticked and made a beauty out of it. I always tell people that creativity is key in anything you do. If you are creative with it, you will be able to do so much. And you can see those seeds. That's money. Those seeds is good money. You can make a lot of money. And see the space that they are using. See the space. You know, I'm one person that I, when, when people are bragging, they will tell you, oh, I have 20 acres of land. I have 30 acres of land. Yes, you have 30 acres of land. But what have you brought out of the 30 acres? It's not about the land. Productivity. This is less than how many meters? But see what this person is doing with this space. And so, even on this stage alone, you can do a lot. You can imagine, in your house, you have this space. With this space, you can do a lot. And your balcony, a lot of us, we have balconies. And in the balcony, you have sunlight. Even though you are living off. So that balcony, instead of you putting flowers that do not add value to your life, put things like this. It will beautify your environment and add money to your table. Now, let me, I'm going to go to my last slide and come to this. You see, this ugu that you are seeing, you know I told you be intentional. There are seasons that you find a lot of ugu. And so ugu does not command good price. And there are seasons that it goes off the shelf and then it becomes gold. You can be counting five, ten leaves of ugu, and they're calling it 1,000 naira to you. So when you are intentional in what you are doing, you are not going to plant ugu when it is in season. You will plant ugu when it is off season. And when you are planting ugu when it is off season, then you are making a lot of money. 
when I was preparing this slide, the Lord drops a word on my, in my heart. He said, dehydrator. The moment he said dehydrator, I was like, okay, God, you want me to talk about dehydrator. Now, when Ugu is in season and is very cheap, what do you do with it? Most people cannot keep Ugu like that. So you dehydrate. I'm going to show you what a dehydrator looks like. Now, this is a dehydrated Ugu. This is dehydrated Ugu. The dehydrator is a machine that removes moisture from your plants, fruits, whatever, and does not denature it. You know, when there's too much heat that is applied and the mode of heating, it denatures the nutrients. So you are eating shaft. But the dehydrator keeps it fresh and you are having it just as good as real, the, the fresh one. So all you need to do is just to add water and use it when you want to use it. Or you can imagine how much money this person will make because when he or she was doing this, it was at the peak of production. And that brings me to something. Usually, like now, tomatoes, a bag of, a, a sack of tomatoes is about a hundred thousand, a hundred and something. Ma? One fifty. Meanwhile, two months ago, I still got tomatoes for people in this house for 17,000 naira. Yes, sir. 17. Some members of this fellowship came to my hub to buy tomatoes at 17,000 naira two months ago. So for you that has a dehydrator, you could have bought those tomatoes dehydrated and bagged them. And when it is off season, you just soak and you do. Then you can also turn it into tomato puree. You can turn it into tomato powder. These are not very expensive technologies. They are simple, affordable, and on the shelf. Next slide, please. So I've talked about yam. I've talked about yam. Can you go to the next slide, please? You can see our tomatoes. That's, I talked about that, the, the, the flower pot. You can see the shape of that flower pot. It allows the tomatoes to express themselves. Now, there are different varieties of tomatoes. We have a greenhouse on our farm. And in the greenhouse, you can grow premium variety of tomatoes. You know those tomatoes that when you eat, you think you are eating plum? Really nice. You can actually grow them even in the comfort of your home. So what do you do? Like I told you before, don't pour your seed on the floor and just assume. So get a good variety. Either your pepper, like I told you, you can go for the habanero. Habanero pepper. Don't go for just any kind of pepper. Habanero pepper is very hot. If you want to cook your soup, you just need one or two seeds of habanero. And it has a very nice aroma. You can't resist it. You know, it's very nice. So that's one variety of pepper. Then your tomatoes as well. Go for the good variety. And then do a nursery. So when you get your tomatoes, for instance, your seeds, you can do a nursery and you remove the seedlings and plant into those, your containers. And you know, tomatoes too also has vines. So you stick them and allow them to grow. Your bell pepper, you see those bell peppers? This one, this pepper you are seeing, they go as high as 1,500. Yes, 1,500, 2,000. For one. For one, one, one. One that looks like tatashe and then green pepper, yellow pepper. So, in the comfort of your home, on this platform, you can get kilograms of bell pepper if you know what to do. So, you can see that. Tomatoes to your left, 
bell pepper to your right. Different varieties. We have the yellow, we have the green, we have the red. So if you want to go into them, you just raise a nursery and you transplant into your vat, your, you can call them vats, you can call them containers. You have your soil. So it is for you to check the soil type and then you use your manure. And the good thing with this type of farming is that it helps you to control pests. So you do not use a lot of pest controls because it's more of indoor and it's in a controlled environment. So this is very healthy and it's something that can thrive. Next slide, please. So like I said, we're not dealing with just crops. We're talking about poultry, cum fish farming. Now, in that your balcony or at the backyard, you know you can actually get a water tank, a small water tank, or even the drum that you use in putting water in your house. Put 10 fishes. Just put 10 fishes. Make sure you have a place where water can go out and fresh water can come in. You have your lowest part of your tank, your water can go out, and then from the top, fresh water comes in. The reason why it has to be that is because you want, there are times that you have the leftover feed and you want to flush it. So the lowest part, because of gravitational force, the water goes out and then fresh one comes in. And the freshness of your water determines the growth rate of your fish. Now, if you are not doing it on a big scale, you are doing it on a micro scale. You have your fish in that place. You can see these cages. You know you can actually have your cage on your fish. You can have your, yes sir. You can have your cage on your fish. So if you don't have space, if you don't have space and you want to do all of these things, you can imagine. So I have my fish tank here, my small fish tank. Then I have my cage. Can you go to the next slide, please? You can see down, down there is an earthen pond. They are growing fish there. On top of it is cage for poultry. Now, we are going to mimic it to a small size farm. So on this stage, I'm going to play with space now. And I'll show you what I can do on this stage. So on this stage, my fish pond is from here to here. You know this tank? That tank, can you go to the other slide, please? No, the first, the slide before this one. No. Yes. So that water tank, it can sit conveniently here. And then my poultry cage, I will put it a little bit outside here. Half of it is inside, half of it is outside. You know the poultry cage will stand higher. So it will sit on this. The reason why I will do it half-half is because I don't want all the feces of the poultry to go into the fish. Some of the feces of the poultry is feed for the fish. You know everything that the chicken eats, the fish also eats it. The only thing is that the fish needs more of protein. So usually when we're doing the feed production, we add more of fish meal to the feed. So I'm going to put half of the body of the, feed, the poultry into the fish so that the fish, the poultry droppings will be going into this place. And because I'm going to use the waste from the poultry, I will not feed the fish intensively like is, as if I'm not, you know, if there was no poultry cage on it, I will feed intensively. But now I will feed subsistence ration just to sustain them. So a little of the feed is what I'll be using. Now the water from this place, I will channel it to my flowers and my vegetables. This water contains all the fertilizer that I need. I don't need any fertilizer again. So all my water, I will use it to put in all these places. And so nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. 
And this is what they call integrated farming. You don't need a lot of space. When we started fish farming, we started with 50 in our house. 50 was what we started with. And today the story has changed. So dare to start. And you will be shocked at what you can do. But you must be intentional in all these things. So if you decide you don't want to do this, you can do your poultry separately. You can do your fish separately. You can do your vegetables separately. But because of land space, you can manage all of these things together. Now I'll shock you that the waste from your poultry, you can actually use it to get generate gas. And I think we should get to that level now. I keep telling people that nobody thinks well in the midst of abundance. The best comes out of you in the midst of lack. And that's why Nigeria is where it is. Because God has blessed us with everything. But unfortunately, someone said all the bad people in the world, God put them in Nigeria to come and manage the resources. But I think a time has come that we need to look inwards. Like today on our farm, we have what we call the aquaponics. The aquaponics is where we use water to, to, to plant vegetables. And so, we have our biogas. And we want to connect the biogas now. Because with aquaponics, you need 24 hours electricity. But we're not going to generate any electricity. We have the gas already on the farm. So the gas from the farm will generate the energy that we need. In every household, if we're intentional, we can generate our own electricity. In every household, if we're intentional. You know, even from the waste that you generate in your house, your poopoo, -poo, you can use it to generate electricity. We need to think out of the box. Next slide, please. Next slide. Mushroom. Mushroom is very good. But waste wealth. What do you use in generating mushroom? Sawdust. Rice waste. That's what you use in generating mushroom. It's basically waste that you use in generating, culturing your mushroom. So, we have processes for mushroom. You need to have a room where you will do your substrate, which is basically your sawdust, your rice bran, your calcium um, bicarbonate, and you put them together in a sack, in a small bag. Then you would also subject it to heat because you want to sterilize the medium. You want to sterilize the medium. Mushroom is very healthy, but it can also be very poisonous. Mushroom is very good for you, but it can be very poisonous. So if it is not cultured in the right environment, when you are eating mushroom, that thing can also kill. And that's why several times we tell you, so when you have your substrate that you want to use in producing your mushroom, you have to put it through sterilization. And you sterilize between six to eight hours. And after your sterilization, you do your inoculation. And after you inoculate, then you allow it to spawn. And it is when it spawns that you have your mushroom. But I'll tell you also that there is so much that you can do with mushroom. So much. So much that you can do with mushroom. You know, I have just one hour. If I'm to take one topic on its own, I can do a topic for six months. But I'm just simulating your appetite and asking you to identify a niche that you want to tap into. And take your time. Like it's been said before, I work with the Lagos State Ministry of Agriculture. Whatever enterprise that you want to do, I can always link you to experts. For instance, we have a mushroom center that my organization has given to some women. So I've already told them that my members from the Full Gospel are coming. 
anybody who wants to go into mushroom production, they will take you through the start to the finish. Practical, hands-on technology demonstration. And I'm sure after that, you'll be able to start your own. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Value addition. Value addition. You know, Pastor Lumide Emmanuel said yesterday, we are not survivals. We are thriving people. And we are to dominate. When you produce something and you don't add value to it, you will not make good money. When you produce and you don't add value, you can never make good money. So if you plug this pepper, for instance, and you just put it in a plate, you can't sell it like the person who packages it. Value addition. And then when pepper is in season, what do you do? There is so much you can do. You can turn your pepper into paste. And then add so many things. Creativity. I keep telling people, we're Christians. We serve an all-knowing God. And so several times, most of the time, when I'm faced with something, I always ask God, God, what do you want me to learn in this situation? So if I do pepper, for instance, what stops me from doing pepper paste with garlic sauce? What stops me from making pepper paste with ginger? What stops me from making pepper with nothing? And then pepper in oil. Creativity. And when do you do it? It is when it is in season. So as members of the fellowship, we should always look at when is something in season. This is a way through that you are seeing. This is a way through. A time will come you will not find a way through in the market. Why not buy a wedu when it is in season? Pack and keep it when it is off season. I think that's part of the problems we are having in this part of the world. And most times we have post harvest losses. When, toma when mango is in season, you find mangoes, they are throwing. There was a day I went to, I think, Okeodo market. And I was like, my goodness, see the amount of waste. Pineapples. You can turn pineapples into sweets. You can turn pineapples into flakes. You can turn pineapples into powder. So much we can do. And the honest truth is you don't need a lot of money. You don't need a lot of money. I tell people, creativity and as Christians, who else can be more creative than us? I think yesterday, Pastor Emmanuel said something about problems. I don't know if he was the one that said it, or I was listening to a message. And at times, God puts us in a situation so that in that situation, we can find a solution. As Christians, we're solution providers. It, it hurts me when I see people look for work. I don't know why people are looking for jobs. There is so much we can do. My daughter graduated. I told her, I said, you will never work for anybody. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not possible. Go and manage the farm. She's managing the farm now. And the farm is doing great things. There's so much. There's so much opportunities in the land. But most of us, we want to do white-collar jobs. And someone like me, I can't wait to retire because I'm tired of a white-collar job. It does not allow you to express yourself. When you work for somebody, it does not allow you to express yourself. There is so much inside of all of us. And there is so much opportunities around us. Do you know this yam, when it is in season, it wastes. 
or you can actually freeze yam and export out of Nigeria. You can turn yam into chips. You can turn yam into powder. The plantain that everybody is eating and wasting. So much post-harvest losses. You can turn yam, eh, 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 plantain into flour. And you don't need a lot of money. You see, those dehydrators, there are some that are not very expensive. With 150000 you will get a dehydrator. And then some people will tell me that 150000 is a lot of money. It's not a lot of money. You see me? If I don't have 150000 if I have to go and clean somebody's house, I will go and clean it to make that money. I will not beg. And I don't know why this dehydrator, you see the, the dehydrator they gave me, dehydrator. That dehydrator can do and undo a lot of things. The dehydrator, you can use it to do a lot of things. And so I want every one of us to go back home and Google that dehydrator and begin to see what you can do in your little space. Don't tell me you don't have money to buy a dehydrator. The cheapest one, I've seen 150. There's 60,000, Abby. Start small. Start small. That's money. If you have to go and sell a car, so be it. And you will be able to do a lot of things. Value addition. Value addition. It makes a whole lot of difference in anything you are doing. Next slide, please. You can see. Pap, fufu, tiger nut drink. Value addition. And how can you get them? Dehydrator. You see that cassava? The cassava. When you get cassava from the farm, it does not command good price. Oh. We have done cassava that we wanted to sell. In fact, we were frustrated. At some point, I told and I said, maybe we should just feed it to the cows and know that that one, at least cow will give me money. But when you produce your pap and you use a dehydrator to dehydrate and remove the water, it becomes powder. Now, I saw one pap. You see, these young people, they are very creative. Be truth. Beetroot. Beetroot plus pap. Highly medicinal. You are not just eating for the fun of eating it, but you are taking something healthy. So you get beetroot, you grate, you dehydrate, you do your pap, you dehydrate using a dehydrator, and you turn it into powder. Package it and sell and get premium price. Your fufu some of us, like me, I don't eat fufu because of the smell. But have you seen fufu today that does not have any odor? It's fermentation that causes the odor. And with your processing, you can process your fufu in such a way that it does not smell. You dehydrate. And you turn it into powder. And that thing, you can sell outside of Nigeria. The only thing that can bring down the dollar rates is if we're in manufacturing com country. These are opportunities for us. These are opportunities. This tiger not drink. In fact, I bought one last week from the hub. And the lady did it in such a way that you don't have to go through the stress of milling and all of that. She has done it for you already. With what? Dehydrator. You dehydrate the water and you turn it into powder. And all I need to do when I want to do it, take it, is I add water, put it in a blender and sieve. And my tiger nut drink is ready. So why can't we go into all these things? The opportunities in the agri space is huge. 
is huge. The opportunities are there. There's this kuli kuli I eat lately. In fact, I call it komolole. To teach a child to steal. That kuli kuli is so sweet that every night I had to tell myself, one more, you're not a small girl. Stop eating kuli kuli every night. It's so nice. It's still part of agriculture. Value addition. Buy groundnuts when it is in season and add value to it. And you can imagine the opportunities that are bound. Next slide, please. Next slide. My wonder, dehydrator. There are different types of dehydrators. Different types. You can see those fruits. Even your oranges, you can dehydrate them. Any type of fruit, your banana, you can dehydrate. There's this oat that I bought for my husband last week. You know, the woman did Quaker oats and then she dehydrated banana and a lot of fruits and she added it. When we cooked it, I didn't need to add sugar or milk. Everything was inside. It was really nice and very healthy. All we need is to think out of the box. That is all that we need. There is so much opportunity. You know, all these herbs, celery, cauliflower, broccoli, they are very expensive. Since the day that my big sis taught us at um, Ekiti, Osho, was it Oshogbo? Oshogbo? Since then, Ma, I've been telling people to be checking your site. I do it for my husband. Every week he must, yes, this morning, he takes it in the morning and in the evening. And on a weekly basis, I spend nothing less than 30,000 naira. But you know you can actually grow them in your house. You can grow them in your house. All you need is pots. And if you don't want to use pots, you can use wooden vats. You can put tires on the floor and grow these things. There is nothing we cannot grow in Nigeria. The only thing you need to know, when you want to grow something, go and Google it. What are the rules? What type of soil do I need? When do I water? How many hours of sunlight do I need? When do I prune? When do I, you know, just check those things. And once there is a will, there will always be a way. Once you make up your mind that you want to do something, you will do it. I can remember before now, we had a greenhouse where I planted kale. I didn't know the usefulness of kale that time. And out of frustration, I sold, ShopRite was doing me younger, I was so angry. Now, it can't happen, ma. Ah, you know this spinach? There's so much, so much. With a handful of spinach now, 1,000 naira. What stops you from growing spinach in your house? When I talk about spinach, it's not the Yoruba spinach, oh, the Oimbo one. People are buying these things and you, are, you will make good money, good money. You can decide to open a health shop and all that you are selling. You are not a doctor, you are not doing anything. It's just like the malam I buy from. You are selling ginger, turmeric, cauliflower, broccoli, spinach, mint leaf, parsley, and you can grow them in these pots. Pastor Lumide told us yesterday, don't do these things for yourself alone. Go and look for premium yielding varieties that will give you money. And I pray that, I don't know, maybe another day we will do another one. This biogas, this biogas, as this fellowship, I think we need to look at it. Biogas, we need to look at it. Because energy is everything. Energy is everything. And it sh we should get to a point where every household should be able to generate its own energy. On our farm, nothing is wasted. Nothing. We have poultry, we have pigs, we have cattle. 
virtually everything and everything we use. Nothing, nothing is wasted. From waste to wealth, 